Houthi militants attack commercial ships in the Red Sea. These measures are not enough, so we have to look for an additional solution. And it's affecting another crucial trade route. Governor Ron DeSantis makes a statement. Everglades is one of the most uh, significant natural resources. On the restoration of the Everglades. Moms for Liberty facing pushback. We stay focused on defending parental rights. From school boards over what should be taught in the classroom. And over century years old. I had to ask, is this, is this not a typo? And an incredible story to tell. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Natalie LaRoche-Pietri. I'm Samantha Gutierrez. Today is Friday, January 26, 2024. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. It's time to enter the next phase of the 2024 presidential election. Both Republican candidates are saying, not so fast. The presidential race appears to be headed for a rematch this morning after the results of races in Iowa and New Hampshire. But as Kaplan's Brittany Rodriguez reports, Donald Trump's last remaining primary opponent has a little something to say about it. Most Americans do not want a rematch between Biden and Trump. Advisors for President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump say it's time to focus on the general election. But Trump is still talking about his rival for the Republican nomination. Who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before and, like, claimed a victory? Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is still talking to voters, too. She's focused on her home state. It's not the next place to hold the GOP primary, but it has 50 delegates. Haley is behind by 15 in the polls and could use a hometown win. It's her track record as the governor here and then what she did on the United Nations. But polls indicate she's struggling to get support. Donald Trump, 200%. I'll be voting for Donald Trump. <laughs> Meanwhile, Biden is pivoting to the general election. The middle class built America and unions built the middle class. Picking up a key endorsement from the United Auto Workers Union yesterday. Democrats are going to come out and they're going to vote the right way. I mean, at the end of the day, working class people know what's good for them. For Kaplan News, I'm Brittany Rodriguez. Yesterday, the Republican National Committee ceased efforts to declare Donald Trump the party's presumptive nominee. The motion stalled when Trump wrote on Truth Social that he wanted to finish the process at the ballot box. A man accused of a mass shooting in Florida is set to face trial today. Keith Moses' mental competency was ruled stable enough to stand a trial as he refused to be taken to the courthouse last month. Moses is accused of shooting five people last February in an Orange County neighborhood. A nine-year-old girl and an Orlando television reporter were among the victims. The right-wing Moms for Liberty group, known for challenging race and gender books and materials in schools, face fresh scrutiny amid an ongoing sex scandal here in Florida. CNN's Carlos Suarez has the details. Masks do not work. Just a year ago, Moms for Liberty was wielding power over hundreds of school boards across the country, waging a culture war, even garnering support from presidential candidates. Their mission, they say, to protect parental rights in public school education at all levels of government. It's either you're focused on protecting parental rights or you're going to improve education in your community. Their critics, however, say their objective is very different. I think that things have gone too far and people are finally standing up to say, you know, this is my choice. These are my kids as well, too. Jennifer Jenkins, a school board member in Brevard County, Florida, unseated Moms for Liberty co-founder Tina Deskovich. She and others say what Moms for Liberty do care about is control. The first deal was with the masking, and Moms for Liberty didn't want the kids to be able to wear masks. Virginia Hamilton was a public school teacher for 31 years. She joined the group Stop Moms for Liberty because she feels Moms for Liberty isn't about liberty at all. But now, amid a slew of recent salacious news stories featuring the conservative group, including a sex scandal involving the husband of co-founder Bridget Ziegler, some say the group's influence is waning. According to Moms for Liberty, in 2022, 55 percent of the 500 candidates the group endorsed won their race for school board, while in 2023, only 43 percent of 202 endorsed candidates won seats. The conservative group has recently tried expanding into more liberal states. Just last week, holding a town hall meeting in New York City, which was met by a protest from local parents. 
That was CNN's Carlos Suarez in a Brevard County School Board meeting earlier this week. Members took up proposed book bans. They ultimately decided to allow the books in the classrooms. It's back to the duties of governor this morning for former presidential candidate Ron DeSantis. The governor was in Palm Beach County yesterday pitching more funding for the Florida Everglades. The governor called the plan the largest and most significant restoration effort in all of the U.S. Everglades is one of the most uh, significant natural resources uh, that the United States has, not just the state of Florida, but the entire country. Uh, provides drinking water for more than 8 million people in southern Florida, uh, and it's important for the economy economies around South Florida that of course depend on clean water. Yesterday's announcement was in the city of South Bay on the southern shore of Lake Okeechobee. Ship traffic through the Panama Canal is limited this morning because of environmental issues. As Kaplan's Estefanica Calandrielo reports, it's a particular concern because of violence on another major trade route in the Red Sea. As the Red Sea crisis forces cargo vessels to find alternative shipping routes, environmental threats are limiting the use of the Panama Canal, creating a complicated situation for the maritime trade. A severe ongoing drought is causing dangerously low water levels in the canal. Some ocean carriers had chosen to reroute through the Suez Canal, which connects the Mediterranean to the Red Sea before the Houthi attacks on commercial vessels in that region escalated. But now many ships can't rely on either waterway, leading to shipment delays and price hikes. We have been forced to decrease by 24 vessels a day from the usual 36 or 38 in order to guarantee 44 feet depth, and we will keep this number of vessels until the end of the summer. But an unfavorable condition of El Niño and global warming is hurting the Panama Canal like never before, Spino says. 2023 was the second driest year for the waterway in its 110-year history. Water use mitigation efforts, including treatment plants and saving tanks, have proven not to be enough. We are realizing that in a very, very dry year, these measures are not enough, so we have to look for an additional solution. As temporary solution, global shipping giant Maersk is using rail transportation for some shipments to reduce its footprint through the water route. But until drought no longer plagues the Panama Canal and violence eases in the Red Sea, this perfect storm of maritime trouble has global manufacturers and shipping companies at an impasse. Royal Caribbean's dazzling new cruise ship, Icon of the Seas, sets sail on its first voyage tomorrow. Departing from Port Miami, the ship will dock in the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and in perfect day at Coco Bay, the company's private island. The cruise is on its way after a fitting farewell from soccer icon Lionel Messi at the official ship naming ceremony. And Inter Miami fans can now buy the new visiting jersey in collaboration with Royal Caribbean. Lionel Messi, Luis Suarez, and the rest of the team hopped on the ship in Port Miami Tuesday while attending the opening ceremony with a special surprise on their backs. The men walked on stage and showcased their new team jerseys with the logo of the new Icon of the Seas brand. These jerseys are now available for purchase in selected stores. The Heat playing host to the team with the best record in basketball. That's the head and so is the story. She's a rare gem. Roaring our way through the 2020s with a woman who experienced the 1920s. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes. How prepared is your family if a tornado shows up at your doorstep or a flood or a hurricane? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov slash plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today.
Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign, not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. I help our fellows design their paths as creative entrepreneurs. My experience is serving startups, creative businesses, and cultural organizations, and my journey as a queer mixed immigrant with Haitian and Arabic roots informed the co-creative environment we foster at Radcliffe. We leverage our collective diversity to encourage the building of lifelong personal learning networks and mindsets that stimulate continuous innovation. Marking a milestone, friends of one woman who didn't want to let this another day go by without sharing a story more than a hundred years in the making. It's not every day you get to meet someone who is 107 years old. As Kaplan's Victoria Fonseca reports, it's the reason why a caseworker in Anchorage, Alaska is putting the spotlight on a woman who's had an incredible life. And so when I saw 1917, I said, 1917? That means she's about to be 107. Sheree Samuels had just started her job with McKinley Services helping older folks navigate their Medicaid benefits when she saw 1917. Sheree just had to see Miss Phoebe Naira Bashali for herself. Is this real? Is she really? I wanted to ask her granddaughter. I had to ask, is this, is this not a typo? <laughs> This is Phoebe, and she and her daughter Solange and caregiver Mayombi moved to this small apartment in Anchorage five years ago, and according to the United States government, Phoebe is 107 years old. But how has she lived so long? She don't like to eat meat, only she like to eat vegetables, no meat, no too much sugar. Phoebe was born in the Congo of East Africa and then moved to Rwanda. She had 15 children, only three remain. Her life was very good. Because, uh, she had everything. Her children was very good. There's so much we don't know about Phoebe, but thanks to Sheree, we know she's here. She's inspiring, and I feel like people needed to know she was here. Phoebe has a little wisdom for us all. I want you to, to be kind. I want you to to love everyone. Victoria Fonseca signing off with Kaplan News. That he took on the one-seated Boston Celtics team at home yesterday. Miami was outclassed in all fashions on the court last night. Boston had six different double-digit scores, shooting 55% from three to the Heat's 38%. The Celtics put up 143 to the Heat's 110 on their way to a dominant win. Miami's five-game losing streak can be corrected tomorrow afternoon when they take on the Knicks. You're watching Newsbreak and we're coming right back. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. You gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you.
That's all the time we have for Newsbreak. I'm Natalie LaRoche Petrie. I'm Samantha Gutierrez. Get more news anytime at kaplannews.fiu.edu.